Good evening, Graham Rawlins with our Wednesday edition of News Geelong. Bowen's South West region is known as Victoria's region of opportunity by Regional Development Australia and Regional Development Victoria as projects of strategic importance continue to be initiated. The Geelong Racing Club has announced Centibet as the naming rights sponsor for the Geelong Cup for a further five years. It is the largest corporate partnership ever signed by the club and broke new ground in regional Victoria thoroughbred racing. And later in the program, the Flying Hawk, Nathan Curry, will bring us all the latest news from the pulsating world of Geelong sport, while sparkling Lani Salathiel will update us with the Geelong and Surf Coast weather expected over the next six days. Geelong company Backwell IXL has been recognised at the highest level in the Victorian manufacturing sector, with its induction into the Hall of Fame, as Ian Nichols reports. Backwell IXL, a Geelong icon, has just been inducted into the Manufacturing Hall of Fame. It's quite an honour. And down here at the plant, they make all kinds of things, including car parts, which you may not know about. I'm holding on to one of them. This is a bracket for an exhaust pipe for the Ford Ranger. It's actually exported to Thailand. They've got a huge export market and we're going to find out more about that, talking with uh, behind the scenes planners, Ross McDonald and Chris Burke. Yep, we're pretty excited. We've just uh, received our first export part for Ford Motor Company. Um, we're going to export it to three countries, Argentina, um, Thailand and South Africa. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. I'll bet you are, and the fact that you can also compete on a world market. Yeah, we've had to come up with some good ideas and we're actually producing two parts out of the press at one time, which um, gets our labour rates down and gets us to compete with those uh, overseas countries. Well, first thought, you don't think of, uh, of uh, Backwell IXL uh, making car parts to start with, so that was my first surprise. Yeah, most people relate to the IXL Tastic and our uh, electrical appliances, but we started doing contract work quite a few years ago when our appliance parts tended to go across to plastics and we had the press shop producing metal bits, so we went out and took taken on the, um, the contract work. And obviously yeah, very successfully, uh, particularly for Toyota and Ford. Yes, it's a pretty competitive market. Uh, you've got to be on your game to be in it. Um, and we've, our team here at Backwell IXL works very hard at that. As you can see from behind us, there's a lot of planning that goes into uh, new part processes from um, initial quotation through to uh, release to our production team here. And obviously that uh, leads to employment for Geelong. Just how many people under the roof here? Um, in this uh, press shop contracts area, there's roughly about 60 people, but I think site-wide it's uh, a little over 100. So it is a real Geelong icon? It is. It's uh, been going over 150 years now, so it's uh, been in Geelong a long time. And when you say planning, uh, you're not stopping here. There are obviously new contracts to be won, maybe even new products to uh, be produced. Uh, there's always new products uh, on the market and being predominantly automotive, there's always new models, uh, new variants of cars, motors and different, uh, different opportunities come up just uh, yeah, from year to year, I suppose. Yep. At Geelong Icon IXL Backwell, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. One of Mrs Australia pageant finalists, Geelong's own Melanie Morgan, successfully held a fundraising function with glamour, fashion and beauty on full parade. And who better to report on the afternoon than New Geelong's fashion queen, Lani Salathiel. Well, welcome to the Women in Need High Tea Soiree today. Uh, I'm here with Melanie Morgan, who has organised the day in the name of charity. Melanie, tell me about today. We're holding a high tea soiree for the Women in Need Foundation, which is a foundation for um, women across Australia who suffer from self-esteem issues or body image issues. And we're here raising awareness and funds for that charity today. We're holding a fashion parade from clothing stores My Boutique Australia and um, Purple Cow Clothing. And obviously this is in relation with your Mrs Australia title for 2011. Tell us a bit about that. 
it's one of my events as um, a national finalist of Mrs Australia, so we have to run two events as a national finalist and this being one of them. Great, and what's next for you? When are the finals actually held? The final is being held at Crown Promenade on the 18th of um, September and um, that's where the winner is going to be crowned and then they'll go off to the Mrs Globe pageant overseas. Excellent. Well, best of luck for your Miss Australia journey and uh, we hope you win. Thanks. Um, it all started with me designing dresses for myself and every time that I wore them everyone complimented me so I thought I may as well start up my own business. Um, and it opened last September um, online and it's been going well ever since. Excellent. And tell us about these dresses um, that the two lovely models are wearing here today. Um, well this one here is called Snowflake and it's more of just a cute girly dress um, and then we've got this skirt here which is also available it's on our, in our sales section at the moment um, and yeah they're all just cute to wear out to town or to a special occasion. Excellent and they're very racy as well if you want to wear them to the races I guess. Yeah you could for sure and we'll have um, fascinators on our website shortly as well. Excellent so how do people um, order dresses or get in contact with you Danny? Um, on myboutique.com.au and it's got a hyphen between my and boutique. <laughs> Thank you, Lani, and good luck to Melanie in the next steps of the pageant. Regional Development Australia committees were established in 2009 to provide regional advice to the Victorian and Australian governments, as Merrill Friend reports. We're here at the pier on Cunningham Pier at Geelong's beautiful waterfront for the launch of the Regional Growth Fund. This uh, money is going to be going to the grassroot level in community to councils and then it can be used for exactly what the community needs. Well certainly the Regional Growth Fund is the, uh, the coalition government's uh, major investment uh, tool in which we are going to drive regional development right around the state. So it's a, it's a $1 billion fund which is going to be spread out over eight years, so it's $125 million a year uh, for all of those projects that are not part of the traditional sources of funding in other portfolios such as education and, and health and policing and so forth. So for all those projects where there isn't a, a, a single funding source, we have the Regional Growth Fund which will uh, give us the funding to do a whole range of projects right around the state and it will help drive regional development, it will help drive inve investment in infrastructure and it will help drive job creation. We're very excited to have Parliamentary Secretary Drum in Geelong today because what he's told us this morning is the state government's commitment to regional Victoria and very much the work that G21 has been doing over the last 10 years is the foundation plan, the roadmap for the, the future funding commitments by the state government. We're delighted to hear that. We, uh, we've had a forum this morning with key stakeholders, the leaders of business and industry. We've had the university here and hospitals, uh, other the councils as well and uh, what they I think what they've been hearing is that Geelong, the Geelong region is incredibly important to the state government. There's a billion dollar growth fund has been announced which will be spent over eight years and we'll be trying to position Geelong very strongly to make sure we get our very fair chop out of, the, of that funding, that billion dollars. So the, G, the work that G21 does in putting forward priority projects on behalf of our five local councils in front of state government and in front of the RDA committee will very much form the basis of the state State government's investment. So it's, it's, it's exciting news for, for our region and for the many people that over the last decade have played a part in not only forming the G21 Geelong region plan but, but um, giving of their time to making sure that the plan is implemented. It's nice having a plan if you don't have an implementation program. We have at the moment 14 projects, priority projects that each of the councils have signed up to that we want to see invested in and we've heard the Mayor this morning talk about the Library and Heritage Centre so I'm really hoping that we can now turn to the Federal Government to see some investment to match what the State Government and the local council Council have put into the Library and Heritage Centre. From the PM, Merrill Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Merrill. This is News Geelong as we go to a break and return with more news after this.